Yes. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is. So, uh, namaskar everybody and thank you all for taking out the time and uh, reaching out to us through this webinar. Uh, so, as Amol sir has uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, this webinar is actually in two parts. The first part is where I'll be presenting the overview of our students' work since the past two years. And the second half is about one of our most passionate and enthusiastic students uh, of the uh, first batch of this master course, uh, architect Mitra Dave, who will tell what she has learned and how far uh, this journey in TIAKS has been for her. So um, on behalf of MIT School of Architecture and Master of Architecture Department in Traditional Indian Architecture and Knowledge Systems, I welcome you all uh, for this August morning. Uh, I'll begin with a quick introduction that this is a two years full time master's program which is approved by Council of Architecture and it's the third year now that we will begin in 2023. We've started this back in 2021. The first batch is set to uh, graduate in the coming few weeks. Now why did all this start? All of this started with this basic thought about uh, what is it there in uh, Indian knowledge systems where we can find architecture. So whenever we look at architecture, we either look at the Western scholars, the Western uh, theories and thoughts. Uh, and somehow we are aware about the Indian scholars, we are aware about Indian sthapatis, uh, but somehow we have lost contact with it. So the first and foremost thought that came to our mind was to establish this link between what is uh, being on the verge of forgetting and getting it back into mainstream practice. So what we see on the screen is Dr. Uh, the photograph of Dr. Ganpati Sabati, who has been instrumental in uh, bringing back the practice of authentic Vastu Shilpa Shastra into practice of building temples and many other architectural buildings. Now talking about Indian knowledge systems, we know that Panini has always been uh, revered as one of the greatest uh, uh, linguists of the past, where he has created around 4,000 sutras, 7,000 words, and so on and so forth. The grammatical framework uh, was not only for Sanskrit, but that has become a base for most of the other languages. Now, what is interesting to understand uh, when we talk about architecture is the Shulva Sutra, which belonged to the Yajurved uh, tradition, where we find accurate mathematical measurements to create these chittis, so the, uh, the diagrams that you see on the screen, they are known as chittis, on which the yajnas used to be practiced. So the Shulva Sutra actually is talking about all kind of mathematical calculations, details, how to create a wedge-shaped brick, how to align it at a particular angle, how do you create a particular uh, composition based on various mathematical calculations. So these are authentic uh, texts which are giving us kind of uh, architectural details towards the first basic creation uh, of a built or a built space known as the Vedi or the Chitti. And we know about uh, the Pythagorean theorem, but in the Shulva Sutra, a similar kind of, an, of a calculation is given where they talk about how do you create an exact square or how do you measure the sides and the diagonals with a certain uh, set of formulas. Having th thought of all this, we also came across this global scenario where building of temples or building of in traditional Indian uh, monuments is happening all around the world. So we, we find many temples being built and uh, constructed in Dubai, in USA, in various parts of Europe and where, uh, where all we can see this. Similarly, there are many uh, Indian authors who have collaborated with Western or uh, non-Indian authors and they've published so much of work on uh, the, the traditional Indian temple architecture. Then there are various foreign authors who have done a lot of work in this domain. Whereas it is now time that we also get and venture ourselves into these kind of uh, works. Coming to the national scenario, in India also, the temple uh, architecture or temple building industry is at its boom. So like we've just uh, seen the uh, Mahakal Mandir corridor in Ujjain being inaugurated a few months back and Ram Mandir Ayodhya is an ongoing project. So these kind of opportunities in India are going to multiple uh, 
multiply in a in a lot of number and we as architects are supposed or we must be making architects ready to be able to actually authentically design these temples and temple complexes and how do we do this we do this because we already have a certain set of uh, texts and treatises there with us it is only for us now to bring them back to mainstream practice so we have texts like samarangan sutradhar or manasara mayamatam or ishana shiva guru deva paddhati all these texts are there and in, at our department we are actually making effort to read through the texts and trying to uh, create temple designs in our studios now the goals of our department are to create ambassadors for promoting the rich traditional indian indian architectural knowledge systems and their practical applications with evidence based research across the globe and also to establish a center of excellence for traditional indian architectural knowledge systems that will bring together various stakeholders around the world to foster education education research and consultancy ecosystem this is the uh, the the or uh, this is the matrix of the courses that we offer now courses over here means subjects okay and uh, mr in tiks is the program so whenever i mention course it means it is subject so we uh, have this masters program spread across four semesters two academic years semester 1 2 and 3 have design studio which progresses with complexity and the challenges become more and eventually it gets uh, culminated into a dissertation project which is an individual project we have vastu shilpa shastra spread over two semesters the first and second uh, and planning principles of india takes uh, its place in the third semester then we have research so we are creating a research environment over here and that is why we are thrusting a lot upon research as much as we are taking care of the practice so research is there in semester 1 2 and 3 then it is about indology so in in indology we teach indian religion and architecture history of ancient india and bharatiya prachya vidya we lay a lot of emphasis on bringing this knowledge to the entire world through the digital medium so digital skills is one of the very important subjects in the first year which also carries more credit and more time and then we have indian aesthetics and building biology the other uh, part of the syllabus is are the electives which are uh, completely flexible students are given opportunities to choose from a certain set of offered electives under the design craft and art uh, streams and we teach sanskrit as an audit course so we have people from our uh, mit school of vedic sciences we have teachers coming from there and they uh, actually conduct sanskrit classes where uh, they prepare all of us to be able to read to understand and also to interpret what is there in the text so uh, we are proud to say that at the by the end of the first semester our students are able to communicate in sanskrit uh, in a few sentences at least then between the third and the fourth semester there is an eight week or a 40 working days internship which can be undertaken under a practicing architect or a conservationist an archaeologist an indologist uh, or a person who is uh, working on digital intervention in heritage and here we are giving a uh, flexibility to the students to choose a practice oriented apprenticeship or a research oriented uh, one according to their uh, interest area of interest and in the fourth semester along with dissertation we have open elective where we are offering uh, options like architectural education or jyotish ganit ayurveda and so on and so forth and the total credits for all the four semesters is 87 so as i briefly mentioned these are the main uh, three thrust areas of the program vastu shilpa shastra building biology and architecture and indology we are completely uh, getting the authentic and scientific learnings of all these three streams into our curriculum and along with this there are design electives craft electives and art electives in which we are uh, we are trying to touch upon uh, various allied domains which are uh, which are related to this 
TIAKS or traditional Indian architectural knowledge systems. So for example, we have uh, cultural landscape or religion and architecture, Panchabhuta and the relation of it to the cosmic science. We have theater design or traditional disaster management strategies. And uh, under the craft elective, it is most of the times it's hands-on. So uh, we, uh, we went on to understanding crafting techniques or sculptures and iconography, mining and metallurgy, or uh, going to the uh, actual quarries and looking at stone dressings and carvings and so on and so forth. And under the, under the art elective, which is also kind of hands-on a little bit on research, where we talk about Natya Shastra, Vedic texts, mythology, epics, aesthetics, and so on and so forth. Now the idea over here is to actually bring together the classical and folk knowledge into the architectural practice and research, and then bringing these two streams together as traditional Indian architectural knowledge systems. Now to do this, we are touching upon the streams like building biology, Vastu Shilpa Shastra, cultural landscape, Sindology, temple architecture, astronomy or Jyotisha Shastra, Indian aesthetic, sociology, digital applications, anthropology, and many more are building up as we are progressing ahead. These are the kind of uh, works that we do in our studios. So basically it is about spiritual study, hands-on study, and theoretical study. Most of the classes begin with a 10 minute meditation session, which is known as body quietening. And this has been put into practice to all of us by one of our gurus, architect Sashikal Anand. And she has, uh, she has actually made us learn this and we are now experiencing the benefits of this. Uh, then we have a lot of, uh, uh, we have a good infrastructure at our university where we have uh, labs where P uh, students can do 3D uh, printing. We have the timber workshop where lathe machines and other machines are there. We have a metal workshop uh, and there is a CNC uh, printing lab and we have all facilities over here which are free for the students to uh, use and get their uh, outcome out of it. And in the theoretical study, we have group discussions, we have class sessions, we have uh, sometimes in the class, sometimes outside the class. So there is a lot of exchange of knowledge and ideas that happen. Now coming to what we've done so far, uh, in, the, in the first year design studio, we always start the studio with this uh, unique kind of a unique project known as ancestral study. Because the, in the beginning, we, we want our students to go back to their roots, go back to the village that their ancestors came from and find out all relevant data and details related to the social, cultural, religious uh, aspects of the society at that time to document their homes or, or maybe a settlement or uh, actually going back and finding that connection with uh, one's own past. So this has been a, a very interesting exercise that uh, all the students have been absolutely enjoying and they get immersed in, uh, in these kind of exercises. And we are really thankful to our other guru, Dr. Harimohan Pillai sir, who initiated this uh, kind of an exploration, which has become such a wonderful uh, idea in the studios now. So, so, so uh, now so far we have uh, five ancestral study documentations from various parts of Maharashtra, two from Karnataka and one each uh, from Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh and Gujarat. And we have two more from Rajasthan. Now, other than that, in the first year, we are, uh, we are laying our emphasis on the physical documentation of structures. And how do we do this? We uh, inter, uh, interrelate this with the digital skill studio, where the students learn different techniques of photogrammetry and drone mapping, and those are used in the documentation of uh, religious or any other precincts. And then based on that, there are different projects like design of kiosks, mandapas, or a, a, a corridor uh, which leads from a religious precinct to a river or something like that. In the second semester, uh, we uh, delve us ourselves into temple design, residence design, retrofitting of an existing uh, residence, 
and then there is also cultural mapping and in all of this we try to uh, inculcate all the indian knowledge system learnings like learnings from vastu shilpa shastra where we get into the ayadi calculations pada vinyasa and how do you actually establish the brahmasthana and then how do you start with the design or in retrofitting we combine this a uh, project with the learnings from building biology where where we try to figure out which kind of energies are active at which location and accordingly how do you suggest certain uh, changes or modifications to the client so every time our uh, our, our uh, uh, idea is to bring this to mainstream practice okay and not just leave this at uh, you know something which uh, because i like heritage so i will get into this uh, program no it is about making it relevant to the present and how do you get this in a in the most scientific way in the third semester we uh, go again to the idea of cultural mapping but uh, we uh, increase the challenge over here we increase the complexity and we also design uh, precincts or we design campuses of religious campuses institutional campuses commercial campuses all again with uh, the inputs of indian knowledge systems in it this year uh, as i told you our first batch is graduating and we had uh, seven uh, dissertation projects again with a lot of variety and a lot of exploration in various domains of indian knowledge systems for example chikitsa vastu in residential projects where recommendations of changes and modifications for the betterment of the space was explored here or uh, one of our students explored the agraharas of mysore which uh, need immediate attention uh, one of our students who is a whiz kid so he he got into the digital immersive technology in tourism in india and we had various other uh, uh, dissertation topics which were talking about materials so one of our building materials so one of our students explored vajra lep as a building material and now we are taking it further getting some uh, funds to this and we are going to experiment with this material in the lab so let me take you all through the academic work of our students so this is the ancestral study that uh, i mentioned about some time back uh, one of our student belongs to uh, karnataka and now we all know about the bhuta kola because of the movie kantara but uh, this is what we have seen through his work uh, much before that and it has been a wonderful experience for him as well to go back and actually document the kind of uh, festivals the kind of traditional systems and cultural uh, uh, cultural creations that happen at his ancestors ancestral uh, place and he has also been able to actually document his house so uh, even the the family members of our students are now so happy with this that at least now they have some uh, memories of their own old, old ancestral place in the form of uh, these uh, panels that our students have made the other example that you see is again from another student from mysore and she has documented the agrahara where her uh, ancestors used to stay this is another example of a student from uh, kokan on the left hand side that you see where he has actually documented uh, the festival of shimga and uh, how does the palki move around and how the entire village transforms into a different religion uh, in a completely socio religious uh, system and then we have one student uh, from raipur chatisgarh so she has documented uh, her house her ancestral house Uh, which has a sacred grove at the backyard so this has been a, a completely new exploration for her because all these years she didn't even bother to know what a sacred grove is and now that she has understood that oh it is just next to her ancestral house she has actually found a connection a more deeper connection to her past uh these are the kind of projects that we did in the first semester so uh, based on the study of different lattice patterns uh, found in history of ancient india the students have designed a a, a kiosk space for certain um, different functions and we also designed mandapas now uh, at our department the research work on indian column orders is going on and uh, it all started with this mandap design 
project where students were asked to study various uh, column orders, various uh, mandap systems that are there in ancient India. And from there, uh, this project is about the mandap design. But now parallelly in the department, uh, research work on Indian column orders is going on because till now in history of uh, bachelor or in the bachelor's curriculum, um, history of architecture, we come, we come across those European column orders, Doric order, Ionic order and Corinthian and so on. But we've hardly paid attention to the Indian column orders which have their mentions in detail in text, for example, in the Manasar. Uh, this is the hardcore architectural documentation using uh, the upcoming digital technologies that we have done. So the, this is a place called uh, Chhatri Bagh in Fulton, which is a set of memorials. And uh, our first year students in their first semester have done this documentation, along with the cultural documentation of the, uh, the precincts. And the project that they worked on on the right hand side is the design of this corridor. So this is the pacing that they documented and they designed this corridor uh, and we made an attempt to read the Garur Puran to understand the ideas of death uh, in the Indian uh, context. And based on that, this corridor was designed as, as, a, uh, as a design expression of, uh, because there are these samadhis and you know something related to death. So this kind of a campus was uh, designed as a project in the first semester. Okay, then this is about the Ayadi calculation. So as I told you earlier, we combined learnings from Vastu Shilpa Shastra and building biology into architectural design. So before getting into the plan sections, elevations of any, uh, any design project that are given, the first and foremost thing that we do in our studios is to figure out all the Vastu Shilpa Shastra and building biology uh, requirements that are need to be done. So uh, first the Brahmasthana is established, Pada Vinyasa or layering or zoning of different uh, spaces is done based on energy fields. Ayadi calculations or Angula calculations are done based on that the size of the Garbhagruha or the courtyard is established and then the further uh, design evolves. This is the cultural mapping of Fulton that was done. And this is, and this is a, a photogrammetry output of uh, done by one of our students, Vinyas, uh, of the Jabreshwar temple and its interiors. We are giving a lot of encouragement to the students and uh, even faculty to get into this digital mode of documenting and uh, getting the heritage into uh, some use. And then this was one example of uh, the design of a center of excellence where our student has actually taken the Pancha Mahabhuta concept uh, and created this kind of a design. Now this design is done by a, a practicing architect who after say a, a 20, 22 years practice came back to the uh, academics only because he wanted to know the right way of using Vastu Shilpa Shastra in his practice. And we are proud to share this with you that his practice has been enhanced with the knowledge that he has got in these two years. And this is a testimonial that we received from him. Uh, then we talk about the planning principles of ancient India where we uh, learned about sacred ecology. We learned about different cities or traditional cities like Ujjain, Ayodhya and Madurai where we try to understand the culture, society, the ancient planning principles. We also lay emphasis on uh, the archaeological part in planning principles of ancient India, where we uh, find to where we made an effort to find connects uh, by studying the cultural environments of various settlements across various historic periods uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Architectural research has been one of our most uh, interesting and very important uh, area of work where we uh, are preparing students to take up uh, research in traditional Indian architectural knowledge systems. Uh, our students have also been uh, a part of the IKS internships where they were interns and they were guided by uh, different uh, uh, guides from allied fields of Indian knowledge systems. 
and uh, our faculty has also been actively involved as mentors in the IKS internship programs. So research as an environment in the department is full swing. So everywhere, and, and we have, um, it, it's not about just doing research. We have a lot of mentoring, we have guidance, we have handholding, where we actually prepare our students to do research in the best possible way. As I told you, we are also thrusting a lot on uh, digital interventions. So we have a, a four credit, which means four hours a week, uh, a studio, which is called digital skills. So we have uh, teachers from uh, School of Engineering who come and uh, take sessions on drone mapping. We have in-house teachers uh, who are specialized in digital architecture and computational design, uh, who are architects, who help and train the students in photogrammetry or 3D printing or and even uh, GIS, uh, where we are trying to, uh, again, connect the dots with digital uh, intervention in heritage uh, documentation, as well as taking it further for research by using tools and techniques like GIS. This is the GIS work that was done by the first year students last year, where we took an area of uh, the Karha Basin. So Karha is a river and we documented all the uh, temples along the river flow, along the route of the river and created a, a GIS uh, data output for that. And this work is still going on. Now this is about Vastu Shilpa Shastra, one of our uh, most liked uh, theory subjects of this uh, program in which uh, the basics and the uh, important aspects of Vastu Shilpa Shastra are covered, of course, but then there are uh, theoretical and practical uh, calculation sessions that happen. Now, this on what you see on the left hand side is the Shadvarga Ayadi. Uh, it is a six step calculation which will give us a, 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 an output of size of a garbhagruha or a courtyard or an open space. So again, I'm stressing this uh, emphasis on this point that uh, when we talk about Vastu Shilpa Shastra or whenever you all can Google and check, if you, if you put Vastu Shilpa Shastra on Google, most of the times you will uh, see the Vastu Purush Mandala diagram. But Vastu Shilpa Shastra is much more than that. And this is what we've been exploring in this master's program. And then we also uh, make the students understand the relevance and connections of Vastu Shilpa Shastra in the uh, history of architecture. So uh, there are different projects that are given to them where they try to correlate what has been taught in the class uh, theoretically to its applications in the history of architecture. Uh, in Indology, this is also a very much liked subject by the students, uh, where we talk about history, culture, the polity, the societal uh, composition, uh, the religious uh, development, and how things changed in the Indian subcontinent and how they evolved through years. So this was one of the interesting projects where we uh, did the Indological study of a deity. Uh, so in the core city of Pune, the students were uh, sent out and they were asked to collect data about different uh, temples of different deities. So for example, Ganesh, uh, Hanuman, Shiva and uh, Devi. So the students were divided into these four groups. They were sent into the core city and when they came back, they were like, oh, wow, I got to know so many new things. Uh, there is Patriya Maruti, Dulya Maruti, Sonia Maruti and so on and so forth. Like we know about it, but now they have come to us with authentic knowledge about uh, all these places. So we do the Indological study, we do the Ayadi, and then this is the kind of temple design which we uh, come out with. As I mentioned earlier, Chikitsa Vastu. So it's not about scaring the client uh, and you know uh, getting into a panicky situation but to authentically look at the problem and giving solutions either in form of architecture or, or interior design changes, or sometimes even uh, certain prescriptions like puja or uh, doing some kind of a meditative practice is um, recommended in Chikitsa Vastu. And Vastu in planning is also explored. The third important um, core subject which is 
the most important of all is building biology here we are using dowsing rods different uh, instruments different uh, machines and measuring calculators and we are trying to figure out the geopathic forces we are trying to find out the good energies the bad energies and one important project that is going on right now is that we are creating a, an energy matrix at our own uh, campus so now our students are uh, they are well equipped to handle these instruments like dowsing rods or earth magnetometers and other uh, instruments from which they have actually started mapping energies and i am happy to share this with you that one of our students jenil mota in his dissertation data collection he has used all the most of these uh, instruments to understand the energies uh, in his area of work which is in kutch and he has created those readings as a part of his uh, data analysis Uh, this is the study uh, that i mentioned to you about earlier how we are getting into the detailed study of endological aspects so this this uh, group studied uh, the vishnu temples uh, in the core city of pune and this is the kind of uh, analytical outcome that they have given we also talk a lot about ancient indian religion and philosophy and its influence on architecture so uh, there is there are sessions there are experiential or there are immersive sessions where we explore in uh, concepts of ancient indian religion and philosophy we also uh, get into you know understanding uh, stories through decoding panels so there are cultural panels that we take and we try to understand what kind of a story that they are uh, trying to tell us uh, dr harimohan pillai sir always Uh, keeps us reminding about the importance of native indian languages and uh, if you must have observed till now most of our work 99% of our work is bilingual so any of our panels uh, if you see they are not only in english so they are either in english hindi and the mother tongue of the the student or at least in english and hindi because we 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 are also working on this a uh, area of reviving the 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 native indian languages and it is one of uh, the units in architecture and indology as far as electives are considered there are design craft and art electives and we've done uh, these electives so far uh, in our studios cultural landscape traditional indian water systems conservation religion and philosophy and so on we have uh, our students we have taught our students uh, to read and write brahmi script and uh, we have also got into this exploration in the studio to decipher certain uh, epigraphs uh, we've done metal embossing and mosaic building materials iconography uh, and in art elective we've done indian aesthetics or rasa shastra natya shastra purana evam itihas and indian mythology and we are also offering um, Uh, open electives like jyotish ganit architectural education uh, ayurved and so on and so forth now these are the kind of works that our students have done in the elective so in cultural landscapes uh, we actually read uh, works of kalidas uh, and here what you see is the malavi malavi kagni mitra uh, excerpts where what mentions about cultural landscapes are there have been found out now having given an a, a basic and a detailed understanding about cultural landscape the students when they started reading of course the translated versions of uh, kalidas's work they could actually connect the ideas of cultural landscape to the uh, the poetic writings of these great uh, poets and then we uh, got into this uh, practice of understanding indian temple styles because temple architecture indian temple architecture is taught in bh curriculum in the second year so by the time students come to this program uh, they kind of want to reconnect with it so the link is lost and that is why we uh, get back into the detailed study of various styles of temples kinds of temples how did temple come into existence how did it progress the evolution of temples and so on and we create such a matrix which gives the students a thorough analytical understanding about temple styles and its characteristics 
yeah then this is about another elective where we have uh, studied water and its uh, associations in the traditional water systems where we have done uh, theoretical work we've done literature review we've so far we have documented five water structures in the state of maharashtra in our collaboration with maharashtra bara mohin and this is the kind of work that one of our students has been able to uh, come up with So this is a step well in Kondwa, which we documented last year in April. And this year, uh, in March, we have documented three another water structures in Satara district. So this output is uh, is done by taking. hundreds and thousands of photographs and then combining them together uh, using different software and plugin to photograph it okay so moving on uh, this was another interesting uh, elective we had last year architectural conservation uh, so we have in house architects who are uh, conservationists and uh, they take these sessions where they uh, explore vernacular heritage they explore different examples across the globe and also then try to find connections uh, with the traditional indian systems uh, this or iconography is the most interesting and the most liked topic uh, that we've done so far by the students so uh, here we get into understanding the uh, the details of iconography uh, pertaining to what are the ayudh uh, what are the weapons how do you identify is it vishnu or uh, devi or uh, shiva and so on and so forth so the students thoroughly enjoy this and with this we also explore the stories Uh, through sculptural panels across the indian subcontinent uh, in craft elective as i mentioned earlier it is mostly hands on so we've done metal embossing uh, mosaic work we've done timber uh, so much so that this year we went to a, a tim to timber market in a workshop and two two three days uh, all of us were there students were exploring all kind of hands on activity and uh, these are the column orders uh, that i mentioned about uh, that we created out of timber at the workshop so like you see uh, over here the the chitra kant or the padma kant and all these kumbha stambha these are the different column uh, orders mentioned in the text manasar manasar so we are referring to the text creating those uh, drawings in autocad taking them or transferring them on a timber section and using the different uh, machines and equipments at a timber workshop we have created these uh, four column orders so all four are almost 1 to 1 and a uh, quarter feet high uh in indian aesthetics we learn the rasa theory and how the uh, navarasas impact on on the spaces and the building natya shastra was an interesting elective where uh, 
people from uh, the sanskrit background gave us uh, an uh, a learning about the natya shastra which is written by bharat muni and from that we came to the design of a theater space so there are uh, different uh, different theater design uh, recommended in the natya shastra by bharat muni and we actually have made these scaled models using timber in the class and we've also tried our hand with sketch up and other digital so wherever possible we are uh, encouraging our students to use the digital medium in puran eva mitihas we got into the deepest learning about uh, traditional or ancient indian religion and philosophy right from uh, the vedic uh, era to how the purans came into existence and what are the puran what does puran mean what are the attributes of puran and how do you take it further to understand temple architecture uh these are our co curricular activities where we go to site visits uh, we do cultural mapping we do measure drawings we do interviews surveys and we try to find out anything and everything related to that space so so far we've done 10 plus site visits to study tours 5 plus webinar 16 plus guest lectures 4 plus workshops and 2 plus heritage walks yantra mantra and tantra is one of the most important and auspicious days in the studio uh, this is guided by architect sashikala anand ma'am and here we create that aura into the studio by uh, doing certain chanting uh, doing a puja and then what you see over here is our students trying to work with the pendulum so uh, ma'am gives um, uh, ma'am gives Uh, uh, help or man provides help on this by guiding the how to use the pendulum how does it move in a particular energy field what do you understand when it moves in a particular direction so if it is uh, moving in round and round direction it's a it's a positive energy field if it sways left and right for uh, back and forth then it is a a disturbed energy field and until and unless you experience that you get tuned with that uh she believes that you will not be able to give solutions to that so a completely experiential uh, studio happens on these days and as i told you earlier this is the kind of work we did at the timber workshop and we conducted heritage walks uh, so we had an international studio with our department of urban and regional planning uh, where 10 uh, 10 students from australia were here and we conducted a, a heritage walk to the town of jaisuri on one day uh, we were blessed to have dr joy sain visit our university in the month of december and his sessions his formal informal any uh, kind of interactions with him were just very very interesting and constructive so he gave a talk on the sacred geometry of indian architecture evolving to the mandala and it just didn't stop there it it went back to the studio where the students were asked to use geometrical instruments and create that sacred uh, mandala back into their work uh, we also hosted a, an exhibition on uh, of our students work called uh, traditional indian knowledge, architectural knowledge systems and uh, uh, joy sir was the one who inaugurated along with our executive director uh, professor jyoti thakre ma'am these are the content the contents of this this presentation are the studio works of our students and uh, they are the most important assets uh, of our institute and uh, they have been the most enthusiastic and uh, sincere uh, they have been very curious uh, they have been passionate uh, students of the department Uh, these are our mentors architect sashikal anand dr hari mohan pillai we have an advisory uh, board uh, where we have dr vasant shinde from deccan college we have dr navin piplani uh, dr joy sen and architect mayank barjatya who is also our visiting faculty for building biology and dr manjiri bhalera who is an archaeologist and endologist we cannot thank much to our principal dr ashwini pethe ma'am whose uh, brain child is developing into uh, this course uh, this program 
and we are happy that under her mentorship and under her guidance uh, we are able to progress even more further these are the people uh, or distinguished guest speakers we've had on board so far from various architectural and allied disciplines who've come to uh, to us who we've invited and they have been more than happy to come here and share their knowledge with us uh, the outreach activities so far have been uh, uh, like this we have our collaboration with maharashtra bar mohin we have a heritage club called heritage yatra under which a lot of activities heritage walks see talk series workshops uh, photography sessions competitions yeah. all keep happening we hosted an exhibition of indian knowledge systems we celebrate heritage week every year uh, in the week of 18th april as 18th april is celebrated as world heritage day for monuments and sites we have organized many webinars on indian knowledge systems we have submitted proposals for iks center or center of excellence at aict iks our faculty has been selected as mentors for uh, iks internships our faculty has been invited as presenters at bharat teerth 2 at iit kharagpur and we have been invited as presenters as at various fdps trcs workshops etc uh this is the uh, this is the information so any one of you if you would like to please uh, take a snapshot of this kindly do this uh so the the inter the eligibility criteria is that a, a person who would want to take up this masters program should have a bachelor of architecture degree with minimum percentage of 50% or cgpa 5 on the scale of 10 there is an exam or a sent or a entrance exam called para cet pre eminent education and research association uh the exam of para is happening right now between 28th to 30th june but the next set of dates in july will come soon on the website when we checked in the morning they were yet to come so we will keep you all updated about this and experience of heritage travel visits and proficiency in any local language will be preferred the admission uh, sorry admission process happens on the base of interviews and sop so the the candidates aspiring to join this program will have to submit the sop by 10th july followed up by which there will be an interview an online interview session on 14th july and we'll be announcing the merit list on 17th july the the two qr codes are for one is for registration and one is to upload the sop we are also providing help and assistance in case in uh, any of the candidate is not understanding what is to be written in the statement of purpose so for that uh, we request the candidate to please reach out to us and we'll guide you on how to do that thank you so much for listening to me and now i hand over the screen uh, to our student mitra thank you ma'am uh, for this brief and yet very very detailed introduction to the mrs in uh, cis Uh, i will now introduce our uh, next speaker architect mitra dave mitra is our second year mr student who has just presented her masters dissertation she has done a bachelor from ritz school of architecture pune in these two years uh, mitra like all her batchmates at mit has shown keen interest in iits one thing unique in her is her urge to create awareness about her heritage in which we all we are sure that she will succeed over to you mitra mitra you are new yes yes uh, good morning everyone and namaste to everyone so uh, myself mitra dave uh, i have graduated from brick school of architecture and now i am associated with mit college adt university and uh, i will be presenting uh, presenting uh, work of all our students uh, from uh, from mit uh, tiks uh, uh, program where uh, and the we are going to try to understand the intent behind all the assignments or activities or what we are trying to do over here how uh, it was associate how the assignment was given to us what we understood and what uh, you know what, what was the outcome out of it 
So I will be presenting my screen now. Hello. Yes. 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 yes Mitra, go on. Yes. Okay. So uh, I always like to start uh, with you know this quote which uh, started my journey into you know understanding my culture more better and what is the importance what does culture hold. So uh, Sanskriti. in its truest sense incorporates the genesis and expansion of our philosophy values goals and modes of life in any society and nation cultural values and prints of a nation are therefore the foundational elements of its rise and strength the indian culture incorporates holistic approach to healthy and progressive life so if i have to you know uh, bring down the whole course and what we are trying to do over here this quote is something that will explain it very well that the, our cultural values our uh, our philosophy our goals is going to decide the nation's uh, way of looking so we should look first in our own culture what does it teach and then go towards uh, what we want as a what, what in our nation so yeah uh going forward i wanted to show you our ancestral study before going into the ancestral study i wanted to say that any first assignment i hope every one of us also uh, whatever we did as a first assignment in our bachelor's had given us the outlook towards architecture okay in a similar fashion the ancestral study was our first assignment in masters course so it decided the way we looked towards our heritage towards our roots towards our culture it it gave us the vision of what uh, what our culture holds and uh, these uh, this documentations were live uh, live uh, case studies which uh, which helped us to understand uh, all the aspects of tiks in one uh, one assignment so in this we had a uh, like we started from uh, knowing uh, the sat pd apne ghar ki jo sat pd hai pehle ki baat se humne shuruaat ki thi is cheez ki so we started from that we went where where is our uh, ancestral house we documented all these spaces we uh, we uh, you know to took interviews to understand the terminologies of building materials of different rooms and how does these terminologies hold value over there so i would like to give an example of my own ancestral house where foundation is known as khurchi now it's a funny term khurchi is a very funny term but at the same time it makes so much sense that there is there are four uh, you know there are pillars and on which there is a platform which looks like a uh, chair so these kind of terms and terminologies which makes sense when we go in depth of it we will understand so this was our ancestral study and then we had designed a house uh, so this is the whole ancestral study and whatever learnings we took from the ancestral study we we had made a house uh, depending on that in the same site so we did brahmastana we did uh, we, uh, you know different uh, pada vinyasa and how to use grid and all those information was taken from vastu and building biology and those subjects so this is this was the larger picture and uh, then we go towards how uh, you know what we need to do in design comes from vastu shilpa shastra and building biology so these are the sheets where we understand the uh, the chakras and mandalas of our own body then we also understand uh, the elements uh, on the cosmic level and then we try to create a correlation between the, these two things in our built spaces so here you can see there are characteristics of a uh, building biology we are understanding the cosmic energies we are understanding uh, energies on a, a unit level like on a human level and then we are doing a a, a a uh, house where we are trying to correlate these two in in a space because space is is on both levels it is on cosmic level as well as human level so the space needs to be a bridge between the two so these elements we got from our uh, building biology and vastu shilpa shastra so uh, this was a elective in which we had created a natya shastra uh, theater based on the papers and the texts available uh, in uh, in ancient indian uh, philosophies so natya shastra uh, ka pura we had done uh, research about it in so many papers what was the text written about it and those were applied with those proportions with those uh, measurements and everything with uh, uh, you know direction and everything we had created two models 
uh, use it and uh, it was uh, also timber workshop was included in this so the columns are made out of timber the platform and everything and then incorporating all the rules and regulations of natya shastra so this was uh, all about that then other than this they, we had a, a ancient indian literature uh, uh, elective in which we went extensively into understanding what are the different literatures uh, existing and how they are related to architecture but uh, and understanding that as well ye sabko pata hai ki there is ved there are purans where there is agamen uh, and there are buddhist literature but the way it has come the context how the context plays a role what was happening at that time why did ved need to be converted into puranas or uh, what was the need of this what was upanishads what was the uh, you know uh, uh, a flow chart in a way that to understand what comes after which and what was the context behind it what was the uh, need of it is very important to understand so this ancient indian literature give, give us a uh, you know kind of a complete background about our philosophy and other than that this is uh, again a model uh, of virtual model of natya shastra from natya shastra and this is a uh, metal metal embossing workshop that was conducted under craft elective so these are kind of workshops that were conducted then uh, for our last semester in second year last semester we had an open elective where we had selected architectural education as our uh, elective so in which we had uh, under, because most of our uh, students and so kal mai mutlab dhyan do do pata na 30 kilo so uh, mo most of us okay. are uh, are very much interested okay. in okay. 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 as well as academic work so uh, so th that was the reason why we we all decided to select architectural education as our elective in which uh, we understood how to uh, relate goal and vision of a uh, of an institute with the course that we want to develop and uh, the one of the uh, assignments that we had done which is demonstrated over here was to introduce iks uh, in uh, in the bachelor's of uh, architecture so here what we have done is first we went through the uh, through the existing uh, existing uh, a uh, course and where there is a lack or a gap where we can introduce ikes we have highlighted those and then i have went into detail of where i want to include so if the first one is the scope and importance concepts concepts of uh, sustainability and uh, sustainable development so i am saying that sustainability is there in hindu lifestyle and religious activities as well so why not introduce those with the uh, existing unit also then the, there are different ecosystems that are explained so like uh, forest ecosystem grassland ecosystem so uh, sacred groves is also creates a uh, uh, ecosystem on its of its own so why not introduce sacred groves also in the ecosystem and lastly the one big assignment that i had created was uh, to uh, to do a live case study and a book case study of some sacred place which can be a water body or a hill or a mountain or a cave anything where they study the location religious and cultural significance of the place mythology related to it religious space associated to sacred spaces like is there a temple or any other uh, built structure over there identifying the sacred plants and tree uh, and animals and doing live sketches over there and analyzing the ecosystem created through this sacred space so this is a course that is developed for the uh, for the first year of pr uh, this course is developed uh, by us with the help of our teachers and everything with understanding of vision goal uh, program specific outcomes of the uh, of the uh, of the college so this was open elective uh, as ma'am ma has mentioned before also that uh, there were uh, five steps that are uh, that are documented by uh, our college by our department so this is one of the steps this is a ganesh mandir step in satara this was uh, documented by our first year students so yeah and this uh, uh, this is the second step well which is a, a parshuram uh, mandir kund which is again in satara this is with association of maharashtra bari uh, bara movement 
and lastly this was a calendar which was designed by me and one of my uh, fellow batchmate uh, kishan varma where uh, we have taken a uh, uh, a theme of you know uh, mandalas and we have created a, a hindu as well as georgian calendar it is a mix of hindu as well as georgian calendar based and we have created all these graphics based on a book uh, called mandalas and uh, you will find the you know calendar in the college when, whenever you visit so uh, it was a extra uh, you know extra curricular activity that we have done to so that we can gift and create awareness about iks uh, in different departments and for different people other than this these are the topics uh, uh, dissertation topics for from uh, from all the uh, all the second year students so first one was religious landscape of chape konkan where where uh, i have uh, you know gone into depths of what is religion what is culture how it is associated mm -hmm. with sacredness and what uh, does people of chape associate their sacredness with so we will see that in depth in, in further slides other than, other than this one of my uh, friends janel mota has uh, done vernacular architecture transformation so how the vernacular uh, architecture is been evolving He has done case studies of bungas in uh, Kutch area in Bani region and those regions, and how there is you know contemporary relevance of them. How uh, you know the residential spaces have today turned into resorts and those kind of things, and what are the impacts of that? So and there 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 has been transformation in uh, material in uh, the way they are seen in many different ways in social way in economical ways. So what are the impacts of all those? Is going to be studied by him. Next is Chikitsa Vasto and relevance in uh in residential spaces. So this is done by Nita Gangwal, where she has studied what is Vasto, what are the different elements of Vasto, and then uh Chikitsa Vasto is basically a correction or uh, in the house. So she has done uh extensive case studies of uh different houses in different regions also. Like they are not only. Uh, related to indian uh, uh, you know indian houses there are some case studies that she has done in uh, california in africa those kind of case studies also so our knowledge is been applicable in other uh, countries other continents as well so chikitsa was to her case uh, her thesis is a testimony to that as well then next is traditional building materials of india case of vajra lake this is done by krishan varma where he has studied what are the uh, traditionally how this uh, this material was developed uh, what are the alternatives that are created today uh, today uh, for virtually where it is used how can we develop what is the strength it is giving what are the different meanings of this uh, this one material because it in some in some cases it is uh, known as plaster in some cases it is known as something else so going in depth of the terminologies uh, is what he has done and created this material next is agrahara's evolution and contemporary relevance so this is done by sarjanya shivra where she uh, she has documented the agrahara's as well as what is the uh, what is the impact of these agrahara's on the community how the special arrangement of different uh, you know traditional spaces Uh, brought community cohesion uh, in those times, and how can we bring this community cohesion in uh, today's lifestyle? If we take the same special arrangements that were uh, done uh, in traditionally, so that is what she has done. And lastly, impact of religious activities on built spaces. This is done by Niti Chanda. So she has also studied religious activities that are conducted in her ancestral place in the times of Navratri. So we know there are different kinds of Navratris. Mostly the famous one is always the uh, Navratri that is uh, during the Shara. But here the Navratri of Chaitra month is celebrated more religiously. So what activities that are conducted? What is the importance of sacred spaces in that? And as well as how the uh, house gets transformed into a completely different space during these activities that is what is explored by her so this is my thesis work it is a partial work so here uh, i am demonstrating that so i have done a case study uh, in chafe kokan so first i am establishing my re region of uh, where is kokan what is the uh, mythological reference to it what, uh, 
what is the significance of chakti why it is important to do a case study and documentation and study this uh, festival of shimga which is celebrated which is holy basically but there it is called shimga so why it is important to document that and then i have also gone into you know what is culture religion and sacredness and you know defining exactly what is a religious landscape to go further and then uh, then uh, the planning of uh, the how the village is being scattered and what is the importance of these different clusters those kind of things then i have also like uh, th this festival is a uh, uh, you know, spread out into fifteen days, which starts from Purnima to till uh, till the uh, uh, what last day of Hindu calendar before uh, Gudi Padwa. It is still celebrated. So, what is the importance? Why it is celebrated at this particular time? And who are the gods that are involved in this? And what are the different kinds of spaces that come into picture? What are the community spaces, different temples, different trees, and then uh, going to the unit level of it. So, and then going into different rituals, which rituals are celebrated, where, what are the importance given. So, all this doing, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, extensive study, we're going in depth as much as possible and decoding it to, and creating analysis was what we did in our dissertation. And yeah, uh, so this was all the work that we have done in last two years. There is more, but this was the gist of it. So this is uh, the these are my friends, teachers, and everyone. There are many people missing in this photo, but yeah. And these are a few uh, testimonies of, uh, of of us. So uh, for me, it has given me a direction. It has given me a future perspective of how I want to go further. I was I knew always that I was interested in uh, uh, you know in traditional knowledge system, but now I know where my strength are what are my weaknesses and how i need to go further so that is what i want to say as this course has given me thank you so much